Nearly four years ago, after Democrats wrested control of the House from Republicans, took power, we went to Washington to talk to members of what would be the new majority, including one of the longest-serving members of the caucus, Maxine Waters of California. Congresswoman Waters, who became the first woman and the first African-American to chair the Financial Services Committee, told us just how much damage had already been done in just the first two years of the Trump administration. The last two years have been very dangerous. I have been appalled and surprised at how blatant it has been. This administration uh, is not at all concerned about the welfare of the average family and the welfare of people who are struggling every day uh, to make a living. This administration is involved in many ways in trying to undo the work that we have done to try and protect the average family and homeowners. Congressman Waters was one of the strongest voices calling for the now ex-president to be held accountable, which the House did by impeaching him twice, the first time in history. She went toe-to-toe -to -toe with leading members of his administration, including famously his Treasury Secretary. <laughs> Is there some reason why I did not get a response uh, to the letter that I sent May 23rd? So, uh, Ranking Member Waters, first of all, let me thank you for your service to California. Being a resident of California, uh, I appreciate everything that thank you've you done very much, for the community I there. I don't want to take my time. I, I've, I also I have am. appreciated we, the opportunity to meet reclaiming with you my time. several times. Reclaiming my when time. we were doing our, our reclaiming my time. The, uh, Just please go straight to and the end. Mr. Chairman, I thought when you read the rules, you acknowledged that I shouldn't be interrupted. And that I would have reclaiming the my time. What he failed to tell you was when you're on my time, I can reclaim it. The congresswoman is a favorite target of right wing media and of Republicans. Last year, Kevin McCarthy even pushed to censure her, which Democrats blocked. He also previously threatened to remove her committee assignments if Republicans took control. And Congresswoman Maxine Waters joins me here in Los Angeles tonight. It's great to have you here in person, Congresswoman. I'm delighted to be here with you. Um, you have uh, served for a long time in the United States Congress, That's and you right. have been both in the minority That's and you have right. been in the majority. That's so you're right. one of these people who, who knows what it's like to be on either side of That's that. That's right. Uh, first, I want to start with what you feel you would write as the kind of, uh, you know, capstone of this majority that took, took the majority in, in 2019 and will be ending in a few weeks. Do you feel it was a, success, a successful House Democratic majority? Absolutely. I think that we have done you know, a great job when we're in the minority. I love the way we handle uh, the pandemic and the way that we were able to create, uh, you know, the PPP for small businesses and kept them uh, able to su uh, support their uh, employees. I love the way we understood what was needed in equipment uh, for our frontliners, who like the nurses and the doctors. And so I think that uh, when we're in the majority, we certainly do what is expected of us. It's funny you, you mentioned that. I want to actually follow up on that. PPP is an interesting program yes. for me because I think in some ways it's it, it's it's somewhat maligned in the public imagination as a source of fraud. Yes. But it was very bipartisan. Marco yes. Rubio was a huge champion of it in the, That's right. in the Senate. That's right. And having interviewed a bunch of folks, cross-spectrum small business owners, it really was like the central lifeline that kept places open. Absolutely. During, do, you, do you think, I mean... It's interesting to me that you cite that as one of your top accomplishments yes. in the majority. Yes, absolutely. And I think what's important about this is that Nydia Velasquez and I, serving on financial services mm -hmm. and me chairing it, we were in positions uh, by which we could deal with what would normally have been an exclusion of the poor and the little businesses, mm -hmm. et cetera. But because we were there, mm -hmm. when the big banks basically uh, created their own portals and took care of their concierge clients, mm -hmm. we stepped in mm -hmm. and we put another $60 billion in there that went to uh, the minority uh, uh, institutions, the minority banks, and went to the CDFIs, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the importance of diversity. That's, that's the importance of having a Congress where you have people who understand what the needs are and can speak up and have influence. Because in that first round of PPP, there was huge frustration that yes. people weren't getting in, that That's the right. program was oversubscribed. Right. The other thing about PPP, I mean, you mentioned that, and it, it relates to what I was saying earlier about uh, the House Republican caucus, Kevin McCarthy, is 
That legislating that you and the House majority did during the CARES Act and the subsequent oh, bills yes. during coronavirus oh, that's right. was an example to me of one of the main asymmetries here, which is working with a Democrat, with a Republican president who's standing right. for election that year. That's right. And a Republican Senate, you passed tons of legislation that, right. that strengthened his political position. That's right. And did that knowingly because you felt that it was necessary to get these bills passed. Absolutely. And even as you played uh, that reclaiming my time, a portion that uh, was talked about for so long, I worked with Mnuchin. Yeah. Well, uh, he was the key. Yes, he, he was, was the, the key. one. He was the one. He crafted Treasury. that legislation. Absolutely. Yes. We worked very closely together with Nancy Pelosi and Nita Velasquez, and we did what we had to do. This is, to me, the <laughs> biggest difference between what will be this House majority. Yes. Because, and I just said in the beginning, I think that when push came to shove, even Mitch McConnell was able to... Um, operate, you know, operate a, in, in sort of uh, in that framework. Yes. To deliver. That's right. Are you confident that a House majority under Kevin McCarthy can do that? Should there be some national emergency like that? When, um, the, when the chips are down to deliver on a bipartisan basis, that kind of thing. I am worried. I am worried because in their caucus, in the Republican caucus, you have people who are associated with QAnon and the Oath Keepers, and the Proud Boys. And these are people who are not concerned about being successful. They're concerned about trying to basically undo the Democratic Party, destroy the Democratic Party. And they're willing to do anything. As a matter of fact, I am absolutely worried about our democracy. I'm worried uh, that when the president, ex-president of the United States says uh, that the Constitution, Constitution rather, of the United States uh, must be waived in some way. Mm. That's serious business. And of course, we've gone through January 6th and we've gone through an insurrection. And what has bothered me so much is that the opposite side of the aisle often talked about patriotism. They loved the flag and they were more patriotic than anybody else. But watching what has taken place, I'm stunned. And I am shocked uh, that they will support those who invaded our Capitol, stand up and say, oh, that was not an invasion of the Capitol. That was not an insurrection. Those were just protesters, you know, doing the work of a democracy. They had the right to do that. I am still shocked by all of that. The ranking member in your committee, House Financial Services, yes. Patrick McHenry, yes. uh, will now become the chair, I assume. Yes, that's right. Um, and it was interesting. He, he's a quite conservative. Yeah. But you had some kind words to say about him. And it was interesting. I saw you at a committee sort of saying some kind words and hoping <laughs> that he, he, you know, he, he, he proves you wrong about whatever <laughs> skepticism he might have. That, that those committee-based relationships still remain intact to a certain point, I even am, amidst this context? I am working with Mike Henry now. And we were working right up until we had our break on stable coins. And we were about to move a piece of legislation that we worked together on to ensure that we um, had some protection for our investors and people who were into crypto. Well, there's going yes. to be a big hearing. You're going to have uh, uh, Sam Bankman fried uh, before your committee yes, uh, on the, right. the enormous crypto that's crash right. that's happened. We'll be looking for that. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, thank you so much for making time. Well, tonight. thank you for being having me here. I'm just delighted to be with it's you. Great to have you.